Hey everyone, Papa Red from Papa Red's Fishing. Well, we're out here in the bait shop and uh, we're still in our self-quarantine for the state of Illinois. Um, so that just gives me some more time to make some baits. So anyway, uh, I've been having a conversation with one of my followers on Instagram, uh, son of a fisherman, and he had a pretty good idea. Um, down in uh, Tennessee, where he's at, he had um, noticed that sometimes some squirrels will swim across the river to try and get to the other side to, to get to whatever food is on the other side or whatever they're, they're doing. But he had a good idea. He thought maybe that uh, a little swim bait for the top water swim bait with a squirrel would uh, maybe entice some uh, muskies, some pike, or some bass. So he asked me if I would take a look at it and start putting something together and see if I could come up, come up with something for him. So I started thinking about it and then uh, started looking at some pictures. And uh, I think I got a pretty good idea of how we can do this. But uh, anyway, I think we're going to take on the challenge and see what we can come up with. So, son of a fisherman, thank you very much for the idea. We're going to see what we can do. So I'm going to start putting some ideas down on paper and see what we come up with. All right, so I think this is what I've come up with for a, a rough uh, start. So I wanted to try and have this look like this was actually poking its head up and swimming through the water. So I just wanted the top of the head and the back, and then I'm going to have the legs trailing behind. We'll have to come up with some sort of a tail. But then we'll put the, uh, the lip right here below the eye coming straight down. We'll have the hook, the uh, line tie just below the nose to try and keep it up above the water a little bit. We'll have two hooks here. Uh, we'll see how this is going to carve. I'm not really sure I'm going to do that yet. But I've got some 2x2 uh, two two select pine we're going to use for this one. So let's get this... Uh, Cut up and glued up. So yeah, as you can see, there's not a whole lot on this that I can use the belt sander to shape. So we're going to be doing some carving here and uh, a whole lot of hand sanding. So.
I'm not gonna lie. I never thought I'd ever spend this much time staring at a squirrel's butt. All right, well, we got the rough shape carved out. Got a lot of sanding and shaping to do. Add some details. I never realized how much a squirrel looked like a rat. All right, well, we're pretty much finished sanding uh, and shaping everything. Now comes the nerve-wracking part. We're going to try and make that cut so that we have the back end of the bait that'll wobble. Here we go. All right, guys, well, we've got everything sanded now. Everything's cut, sanded. I've got uh, some holders screwed into where the eyes will eventually go. And I'm going to start putting some coats of polyurethane on this. Make sure that everything fills in nice. We're gonna get this ready so that we can uh, start making our mold. Hopefully everything goes according to plan and um, we'll be able to make as many of these as we want. Alright, so there we've got the back half all framed up, set in clay. And we're going to go ahead and pour the first half of this four step mold. All right, there's our front half of the squirrel. You can see we've got the back half is setting up. We're gonna do this one and uh, get this poured, let it sit overnight, and do a lot of crossing fingers while I sleep tonight.
All right, so there we have our two halves complete. They're all cleaned up, put back in their molds. So I'm going to start putting the mold box back together again, getting these things set up. We'll uh, put some mold release on there and pour the rest of the silicone. All right, so we finished up uh, demolding everything. Everything turned out great. Um, so we're going to start mixing up some resin and pouring our casts. All right, it's the moment of truth. Oh, yes. A little air bubble right there. It's awesome. All right, front half looks great. Couple little air bubbles, fill it with some epoxy, no problem. This one makes me nervous. Here we go. Yes. All right, so I've uh, go ahead, went ahead and cleaned these up, sanded them down. Uh, I'm going to leave a little texture on these because I think when I paint it, it's going to help uh, with the illusion of the, the fur. Um, Got a couple of little bubbles that I need to fill with some epoxy. Either that or I'm just going to let it look like he's got a, a bite taken out of his ear. Um, but I've gone ahead and I've drilled some lead holes. And I actually had one little bubble on the rear section here. But I'm going to use, use that as a lead hole. So I've got three small lead holes. Um, this floats right now. We use the, uh, the glass microspheres. So this does float. Um, I just want to make sure it lands you know, belly down. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill these up with lead, start drilling our holes for the hardware. Um, I've got the, uh, the joint hinge all made up to join the front and the back. So we're going to get all this stuff, um, squared away and start putting this thing together and getting it ready for some paint. All right. So we've got it so that both halves are balanced. Nice little slow rise. So by the time we get those hooks on there, it should be just about perfect. Alright, so we got one hook hanger in. I got the joint in. And I just wanted to show you guys that this is so cool.
All right, got the lip all made up. I'm gonna epoxy that in, get it taped off, and we're gonna start putting some color on this bad boy. All right, so I think this is the look that we're gonna go for with this squirrel. I like the light brown on the underbelly and then the gray toward the top. So that's gonna be our, our goal. So let's get started with some white. All right, so looking at the squirrel, on the bottom of the belly you can see some white highlights but it's got kind of a an orangish hue so I went ahead and I mixed up a base for the belly and then an orange to go over the top of that and it kind of runs up underneath the head and then on the bottoms of each leg so let's go ahead and get going on that All right, so for the top fur and the fur on the top of the head, um, I think I'm gonna do a transparent black base coat and then I'm gonna follow it in with a very small brush and hit it with some uh, light gray and dark gray accents and then uh, maybe a little bit of white and try to blend that fur in by hand. So let's get the black on. All right, so that's what we got so far. We've got the black, transparent black base coat, and then we did some white fur with some black fur over the top of it to layer it. Well, that's most of the painting. I've said it before, and I'll say it again can't believe how much a squirrel looks like a rat. Got to figure out a tail. Okay, it's the next day. Everything's all dry. So what I've done was I thought last night 
about what I could possibly do for a tail. And right now it's really difficult to figure anything out because everything's closed. I looked online, nothing really seemed to be right what I'm looking for. So I had an idea. I ended up taking a piece of this twine and ended up unwinding it and uh, trying it out to see what I could get it to look like. So let me show you my first attempt. So here you can see the um, the master, still it's natural wood grain, but this is what that string ends up looking like, that twine, when you unravel it. And then I took and tied it up and put a dab of super glue on it so it'll stay tight. But I think that looks pretty cool. So anyway, I thought about it, and before I unwound it, what I did was I took them and put a sharpie uh, around the outside of the string and then unraveled it put it on a swivel and uh, made up some hardware for it and this is what I came up with and I'm thinking it's pretty cool I think it's a pretty neat look but that's the uh, pretty much finished bait so we got the tail I gotta put some hooks on it still but um, you can see everything turned out really pretty neat so I'm gonna get I still got to epoxy this hinge and get some hooks on it but uh, we're gonna take this thing and try and get it uh, in the water see what it'll do so stay tuned all right so I'm down here at the creek right now I've got the, the squirrel bait out here um, I'm gonna throw it out here for a little bit had a few issues uh, looks like I didn't use enough of the microspheres. Uh, it wasn't quite as buoyant as I wanted it to be. It's a little heavier than I want it to be. Um, we're going to call that a lesson learned. So I opened up some holes a little bit in it. Um, made it ugly. Not going to show you that. It looked too pretty. Um, but it's floating. It, it's got a little bit of action. Not quite what I want. But uh, we're going to throw this out here for a little bit. See if we can't get anything. Uh, the weather's starting to warm up, so who knows. Um, but uh, we're definitely going to be doing more versions of this thing, and we're going to get it working good. But uh, I think we're definitely onto something, so let's see if we can't get something. Well, we're back. I'm happy, and I'm not so happy. Um, I'm very happy with the way this bait turned out. Um, I've got molds, so I can make more. Um, I learned as far as the buoyancy that's going to be needed for this, the weights. Uh, I think I'm going to need a different front bill, make this swim like I want. It's had some little side-to-side -side weight. It's not that far off. Um, I don't want to drill anymore into this. I don't want to tear into it anymore. I think this is just going to be hanging on the wall, first version, untouched, and uh, we'll start with another one fresh. But um, we're going to wrap up this video. I promised that I would take you guys from beginning to end, success or failure. I'm not going to call this a failure, but I'm not going to call it a complete success either. Um, definitely learned a lot. Uh, this is my first attempt at really making a, a nice wake bait. So I definitely learned a lot. We're going to use quite a few more microspheres in the mix on the next batch uh, of resin. We're going to make this thing really light, as light as possible, and, uh, and we'll go from there. But uh, son of a fisherman, thank you very much for the idea. Um, we're going to keep working on this. We need to find a little different tail, something that's a little more buoyant than this. This is uh, trying to pull it down. So anyway, thanks again for your idea. I appreciate it. Uh, as far as the rest of you, I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you're happy with the final product. In the long run, overall, yeah, I'm happy with this. Um, a lesson learned, and we've got something that's real nice to look at for sure. 
and who knows it, it might still catch something we'll try it later in the summer so anyway thanks again this is papa red uh if you like this video make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for future lure building videos we're gonna have quite a few more so uh we're getting into the warm season and we're going to start getting some fishing videos up but anyway hit that subscribe button and um, hit the notification bell and you'll know exactly when i'm posting so until next time this is papa red and i will see you on the lake mm -hmm.